color. Uh, green is okay, uh, red or blue is good too, but speaking of red and blue, uh, Miss Debbie is going to lead us in the most important thing of the day. Can we all stand? Oh. Can we all stand and say the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for coming here today. And I want to start off by just introducing myself. I know a lot of you, but I don't know all of you. And just <coughs> tell you um, a little bit about who I am and why I'm here. Um, I run uh, the Sky is the Limit Creative Arts Program. We have, and I don't know if all of you know this, but inside the North Point Government Center, there's a great theater that holds 650 people. We, do, we have a, a large community theater. We take everyone. Everybody who wants to be a part of that program can be in it. We have a spring show and a fall show. We have uh, over 50 people in each production. We have a live orchestra, which is all volunteer. We incorporate people with disabilities into our program. And everybody is included invited. We've been doing this for 20 years. Besides that program, 20 years. Thank you so much. We also have another theater program, Berkshire program. Ms. Dolores Terzi is here representing that program. And Jennifer Morgriff is the director of that program just for people with disabilities that meet in that, ch in that center. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen those productions. We've been doing those every year. We also have um, a, a choral program, a show choir program that meets there. We have a summer camp, Rachel Baird is the director of that every summer for children in that, in that theater. Uh, we also have an experimental theater project and that's for new playwrights. We produce their shows. That's in that theater. Nick, I'm sure you all also know that the Sweet Adelines under Bev Bruning meets there in that theater. And of course the Chesapeake Dick is Dick Dodds is here from the chorus. So that if, if you don't know that that theater is inside that building, it is. And we invite all of you to be part of it because we're getting ready to do our next production, which is Guys and Dolls, and um, come out and support us. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you that's who I am, Debbie Staggerwald, and we have lots of other people here who want to say something about who they are. So I'm gonna introduce Rich. Yeah, and folks, if you need more space, then uh, you know, we'll be happy to give up our chairs. But uh, my name is uh, Rich Foote, and I'm, I've been a resident here for about uh, 12 years, and um, my family's in the back, and I taught at Dundalk High School for about eight years. Uh, you may be familiar with a little-known website called Foot's Forecast, and um, read by a few people in uh, the United States today. <laughs> um, well, it started just uh, right, or, right across the street at Dundalk High School by Dundalk students. So that is a Dundalk original. <laughs> and the point of that story is it's not about me. The students were the ones who actually came up with the idea, not me. And just like what we're doing here today, uh, this is an idea that was brought to us by others. And so we just, you know, it's a great opportunity to stand all of you, stand with all of you, uh, Dunlock United, because we have, we all have great stories about our communities. And uh, my family has had a wonderful time uh, being here for 12 years. And um, my wife is in the, uh, in the school system. And my children are, to, are uh, in, uh, at Eastwood Elementary, so they are in, uh, I keep forgetting their grades now because they keep Growing up so fast, is it? Third grade <laughs> and first grade. So I have two students in the school system. They are, as I like to say, they are Dundalk girls. They are born and bred here in this town, right? So Eastwood Elementary is just one of the three schools being affected. And uh, the position, the part of the meeting that I'm dealing with towards the back, if there's, if there's room to sneak back there later, is that you can visit what I call the, you know, the Baltimore County table. I'm very familiar with the school system. There are many folks here that also are as well and have more experience than I do. So I'm not claiming to be an expert, but as Debbie had mentioned earlier, and I'll pass it back to her in a moment, is that we're here to give you factual information based on what we know. So it's just like a weather forecast, right? If we tell you two feet of snow for Baltimore, you're gonna say, okay, explain more. And we'll say, here are the facts, here's what we know, here's what we don't know. So that's really the purpose of today's meeting is to discuss factual information uh, what I'm relating to you is in the uh, outline that we have there. 
So we had our opening remarks. All right, we're going to introduce the Spirit Center. Um, I'm going to be at the uh, Baltimore County table. Uh, afterwards, if you want to speak, you know, ask me some questions, and I can show you the information that has been given to us as teachers and as educators. Um, and I'm sorry, also Hollibird. So can I just uh, do a shout out to my <laughs> colleagues here? If you're from Eastwood, give us a clap. Okay. And if you're from Norwood, give us a clap. Right, they are very motivated. They just like to keep, uh, you know, yeah. Keep talking. Right. And Hollibird, if you're from Hollibird or connected with the Hollibird community. That's okay. That's right. well, they're out salting the roads for the next storm. That's why they're not here. And then anybody from Dunlock High School? And, uh, Dunlock Middle School? Uh, Stricker isn't Dundalk, so I have to, you know, and I some sugar. Grange, Sandy Plains. Okay. Anybody I miss? Water's Edge. Stars Point. What's up, Joe? I guess there are a few schools in Southeast area. That's a neat idea. Um, so anyway, the point is, you see where we're going with this, that we are all in this together. This is our town, this is our community. So. I'm a teacher, I can talk a lot, so I, I, I need to stop now. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to pass it over to, to Debbie. And um, our procedure for the questions, uh, we'll discuss that and we'll have the index cards. So folks, if you, if you have an index card, I'm sorry, we have the index cards. If you have a question, just raise your hand and one of us will bring you a card. Okay, and then we'll go from there. So, ma'am? Okay, um, the one thing that we didn't talk about that we need to talk about is that um, some of you see these shirts, Dundalk United. What really that is, is we're just trying to form a coalition, a loosely based coalition of organizations and communities within Dundalk, our area, coming together to try to share information and bring the people together. That's all it is, and we hope you'll all be a part of it. Um, our main way that we're um, communicating with everybody is uh, Facebook. Um, I'd like to introduce Michelle Boyer right there, Michelle. Michelle runs our Stay at the North Point Government Center page. I hope you've all visited that page. There's lots of great information on there, and it's a way for everybody to put how they feel about what's going on on there. We have over 850 people on that page so far. That's a lot, you know. Um, then we also have... Um, Dundalk United is now have a Facebook page. So if you go to, say, the North Point Government Center, then you can go on Dundalk United's page. It's just a way for us to communicate, keep everybody informed. Um, John, did you want to speak right now? Okay, well, I'm going to let John speak. Once again, this is John Long. Uh, I am the founder and president of Clean Bread and Juice Creek, and I'm also a member of many local organizations here in the Dundalk area. Um, who here loves Dundalk? Come on! Who here is tired of us being the back seat of Baltimore County? Think about it this way. During the War of 1812, when the British decided they were going to try and take back America, they came to D.C., which was professional protected by a professional army, and they marched right in and burned it down to the ground. Now, they tried to come to Dundalk, and Dundalk was mostly protected by militia and volunteers. And guess what? We stopped them dead. This is what the spirit of Dundalk has always been. Didn't matter if a professional army couldn't do it, we'd do it. I know a lot of us here have had relatives who worked in the steel mills, who gave their lives in the steel mills. I lost both my grandparents, grandfathers, from the steel mills. And they built the ships that helped us win World War II. And there was a lot of pride here. And there's still a lot of pride here. And I'm pretty tired of everybody not giving us a say, not asking our opinion, just assuming that they know what's best for Dundalk and they don't even live in Dundalk, most of them. Now, I know 99% of you all are here for the same reason. I know some of you aren't here for that reason, but I know 99% of you are here for that reason. And this whole coalition is started because 
we've seen way too many things in our community change without our input. We've seen too many structures that we know and love disappear without our input. And now we want a way to get information out to the people. This is just the first, I'm sure, of a series of challenges to let you know whenever there's public zoning hearings, to let you know whenever there's meetings, asking for public opinion so you can speak your mind and let your opinion know. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. I see a lot of my volunteers from Clean Bread and Cheese Creek here, and that's incredible because I tell you what, you know, people bust on Dundalk and it, nothing irritates me more. I have done cleanups in Towson, I've done them in Owings Mills, I've done them all throughout the Baltimore County area as well. But you know what? You never see people work as hard as you do in Dundalk. They get in the streams, they get in the streets, and they are covered head to toe in filth and trash and stinky water. And you know what? The entire time, they're laughing and joking and putting their back into it. And then when you give them pizza or something like that, they thank you. To me, that says a lot about the spirit of God. So, with that said, um, I guess I'll be back when they, we want to start going through the RFP. So, I'll give this over to Mr. Foote then. Thank you all very much for coming. So again, if you, if you um, want to speak it with John about the RFP, uh, then he's going to be at that back corner table. If there's two square inches, um, you need to go over. Yeah, I understand. And just to make sure that they know that later on, if Afterwards, if you want, if you are looking for John after the your discussion, then uh, he'll be in the back corner. I'll be back there. And then the one thing we're going to point out here is the index card. So if you have a question, what we're going to do is move into our you know public uh, questioning session. So what we'd like to do is there's a we couple of those. The RFP first will answer a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I understand. Fine. What I what I just yeah just that, uh, teachers uh, you know teachers have a tendency to get people. So sorry, John. <laughs> is that we just want to start having you think about your questions as you're hearing the information that John and others are going to present. And so what we're going to do is pass around these cards. We just ask you to put your name on there and your community and your topic. So as you're hearing people say things, you go, hmm, hmm, you know. And then you can write your question down, and then you would uh, give that to one of us because we'd like to respectfully, you know, recognize you and say, you know, Mr. Jones uh, from, you know, uh, Bear Creek would like to say something. Okay. And that way we all have a sense of who, who's here and... and you know, just to respectfully introduce yourself. Does that make three, sense? You have three minutes. Right, exactly. So, and I'm glad he pointed that out because uh, there was a meeting last week that someone you might know well went over three minutes. Um, it was me. <laughs> I'm not going to do it this time. Right. Ma'am? Okay, so does, do we want to go over the RFP? We should. Okay, well, let's get it caught. Right. Do you have it, John? Okay. Raise your hand if you would like the card. All right, the RFP uh, is, as I said, it's available online. It was released earlier this week. We have a few summary copies back there, and we also have a some hard copies too with sections highlighted. Now, the RFP states there'll be three properties that are coming up for sale, but I know that most of us here are concerned about the North Point Government Center. Uh, it looks like this. If you are looking online, it is. RFP number P-101, sale of Baltimore County property. And the North Point government section is section 2.3. Now, I can tell you, like I said, this is what I do for a living, is I respond to federal RFPs. If something is not written in an RFP, it does not exist. Assumptions do not exist. The government cut tells us that all the time when I, we're asking questions. If we say to them, well, can we assume A equals B in this point? If it's not written there, there's no assumption, which is why they usually will allow a question and answer period on most RFPs for about two weeks, and then after that, they will file an addendum to answer most of those questions. There is no question and answer period that I saw released for this, so they do apparently appear to be putting out an addendum. The first part of this RFP is simply the location, which is everybody knows where it's at. The second part is the ownership. Now the third part is where we start to get our concerns. Section 
uh, it says within that section, the existing communication tower, which the county will retain, would potentially impact the use balance of the site. Now, a lot of people asked about the tower. It's not going to be moving. We know that for a fact. When the tower was placed there, we were told it was placed there by the police station so that way it could have 24-hour surveillance and be protected. We were told it is very important for our med emergency medical and police services in this area, so we had to maintain its security. So there is no provision in the proposal saying that the bidder must continue to secure the tower. There is no provision in it that says that Baltimore County will continue to secure the power. tower. Now, once again, as I said, if it's not in the RFP, you cannot make an assumption. Next section that we have concern over is section 2.34, which says replacement requirement. Now, under the request, replacement requirement, it says suitability of replacement facilities and relative quality of the replacement proposals will be determined by a committee. That means they tell us that if they replace the, they'll replace the fields or the facilities for our community programs. Whether that is equitable with what is currently there will be determined by a committee. It does not say who will be on the committee. It does not say citizens will have any input on the committee. It does not even say that residents or, or businesses in the area will even have an input on the committee. Now, when we posed this question, they said this answer is, to Baltimore County, they said this answer is not known at this time who will be on the committee. Once again, you can't assume that citizens will have an input on it. It doesn't say it. If it said it in here that a citizens panel or local residents would be involved in the decision-making committee, as if the structure and the fields were equal, you can, you can say it's true, but it's not written in the RFP. So we could potentially be left completely out of the decision-making property as to whether what is being offered is equal with what we have. Next section is zoning, section 2.35, in which it says, offers can include an assumption that the county and and county council will support a proposed planet unit development on this property, PUD. Now what that means is if somebody were to come up and say, hey, you know, I've got a great idea. I want to turn this into an industrial park. You guys are already upgrading, upgrading the road base to a nine inch road base, which is more than standard traffic level right in front of the center. You've got a lot of uh, heavy industrial employees here who don't have jobs. So I'm going to put in an industrial center. Now, even though it is currently zoned as dense residential, if the county accepts the planned unit development or the PUD, that completely short circuits the zone, current zoning, which means that just because it's currently dense residential doesn't mean it will stay that way if a PUD unit development is accepted. So essentially, almost anything could be put there if that is accepted by the county, whether you want it there or not. Excuse me, John. You need to tell people what PUD is. That's what I said, planned unit development. Oh, okay. That's okay. The next last section is the one that bothers me and most of my volunteers absolutely the most and most of you. 2.36, environmental constraints. It appears that the site contains no major streams or wetland, and there is no known significant unusual environmental conditions or environmental constraints impacting the utility of this property. Anybody who's been to the property knows there's a stream that runs right next to it. And this is trying to tell us there is no stream there. Lynch Cove Run runs into Bear Creek. Bear Creek is a historic body of water, which was very important during the War of 1812. Several community groups uh, are involved in put it, trying to get an established historic blue trail through Bear Creek, which is a kayaking, boating, and it'll highlight the beauty of Bear Creek, as well as how the Bear Creek area was used by the British when they tried to take 
North Point during the War of 1812. Now, to me, to say there's no stream at all there is a bit of a concern. In December of this past year, 2012, Baltimore County contact, contracted the environmental consulting firm of Parsons Brinkerhoff to do a small watershed action plan study of Bear Creek and Old Road Bay, also called a swap. In that swap, which is also available online on the Baltimore County website, it noted Lynch Cove Run as a critical stream that required additional buffer area to what's currently there. Now, there's a decent amount of buffer there, and they're saying it needs more. If we pave it over and we put concrete on it, how much of a buffer area is going to be there then? So there's contradictions right there, because we've got a environmental analysis that was contracted by Baltimore County that says there's a stream there and it needs to be watched out and taken care of. And then in the RFP, it says there's no stream there. So that's another concern. That pretty much is the end of the sections that actually do affect North Point completely. The entire proposal has several other things in it, which is a lot of standard language for RFPs, but you guys can all take your time and read through it. Those are the main sections. We have proposals at the back table with the sections I spoke of highlighted, and uh, we also, like I said, they're available online. John, I have a question. Sure. Can you say, because it says in there, when the bids are due in the project? Oh, sure. So sure. Talk about sure. It? <coughs> also on the RFP, request for proposal, it says that bids for this property are due on 4.05.2013 at 3 p.m. It says there will be a pre-proposal conference on January 30th, 2013 at 9.30 a.m. There is also an email address for Mr. Jason Stevenson and a phone number if you have any questions. So, once again, I appreciate everybody, and remember, assume you cannot make any assumptions in an RFP. If it is not written in an RFP, people can say, well, you know we're going to do this, or we know you're going to, or you can assume it doesn't matter unless it's in writing in this RFP, or unless it's in writing with, from an addendum that follows. Okay. Thank you all very much for your time, and if you have additional questions about the RFP, you can ask me. Thank you, John. That was great. We really appreciate it. Um, one thing that we know, so we know that they have until April the 5th to bid on the property, and then we've been told that the, the county council has to approve it, and the county council is going to have three months. Isn't that correct, John? Correct. That we've been told three months that they will have to, to decide on the, on the fate of the property. <coughs> um, we know that the plan is that the government center will be sold Eastwood Elementary is going to be turned into the police station. They're moving the police. The plan is to move the police station to Eastwood Elementary. And then they are going to take the children from Eastwood Elementary and they are going to put them at Hollabird Middle and Norwood. And that will be combined and it will either be a K through 8 school or a 4th grade through 8th school. We've been at that meeting and that's what we were told. Um, that's, that's basically what we know. You want to, and okay, Rich is going to talk about that. And, uh, yeah, so the, I'm going to try to set the example here. Yes. Does anybody have a timer? <laughs> All our phones Okay, do. okay. <laughs> so, is there some, uh, there some right okay. Ready, three minutes, set, go. Okay, so I have a nice, uh, one of our volunteers is going to get the Baltimore County letter, and I'm just going to very briefly go over this because uh, Miss Debbie made an excellent point that, you know, Eastwood and Norwood, of course, and uh, North Point Government Center are all related. They're all interconnected. And there's a lot of things, and we know you folks are going to have a lot of questions. Um, so this is just, uh, again, like John had the RFP, and uh, what I'm, if you can give me a one-minute warning, no that'd be good. Um, so this is a document that we can get a copy for you if you'd like. Um, this is a letter that was sent home to children in their folders uh, Friday, I believe. Uh, and there's a three-pager here, and it just says, Eastwood, Hollibird, uh, Norwood, Community Questions and Responses. So I know my time is going to run out, so what I'm going to be doing is just telling you the way this happened. Essentially, it was uh, December 10th, there was a community meeting in Hollibird Middle School. Uh, it was not published in the Eagle. It was not published in the East County Times. There was not a two-week notification process. 
to notify the public of the consideration of a proposed school closing. Um, so those are words that are in state law and they're also in the letters and they're also in other documents that we have. Um, and the point is that, so what the parents did was there was a process that went forward and the parents were asked to come at different uh, input meetings and ask questions uh, and submit those questions to the county. And then what the county did was summarize the questions on this. This is a three pager, um, but there's some basic ones, okay? And so we'll just give you an example. Um, will Eastwood and Norwood keep their individual school names? There are two proposals, and uh, what I'm going to do uh, after I speak is I'm going to go up on the board and just do a very quick summary up there of Plan A and Plan B um, on the, how the school situation, because some of you may not be familiar with it. But uh, so one of the questions that many parents asked, including my own, because I have children that went to Norwood and Eastwood, <coughs> was um, that question, and the answer from the county um, stated here, Based on the final decision regarding option A or B, one minute, um, or any viable options, the superintendent will comply with board education policy 7520, naming of the building and dedication. So of course, as a parent, I'm going to go take a look at board policy 7520 um, and see what it says. And the other thing I want to take a look at for myself, and we can show you, is was policy 7520 changed at any point recently? prior to this announcement. And so this is a question that I have, and I don't have the answer, because honestly I haven't looked, no, but I will. And um, so if you'd like to discuss more about the Eastwood, uh, Norwood situation, I'll be in the back table. There's other colleagues here of mine that uh, you know, know a lot about this as well. But when we give you an answer, we're either gonna tell you, this is what the county has told us, or we will say, I don't know. All right, so. You got another five seconds. Oh, okay. Well, thank you all for being so uh, cooperative. And I'm going to do the AB summary on the board, and I'll pass it back to you, Miss Debbie. All right. Well, uh, are we ready for the questions? Are we ready for statements? Are we ready? We are ready. Does anybody have a question? Can you pass that? Can you come? You want to come up, ma'am? Okay. This is um, from Sandra from Colgate. And I want to say this right now. We don't have all the answers. You know, we only know what we've told you. But we're going to talk about it and we'll have what we can. But I, this is this lady's question. If the police department was moving somewhere in the center of the community it serves, I have no problem with that. Why is it moving near the city line? off Eastern Avenue that is not inside the community, that does not deserve the community from the inside out. That's and that's a very good point. Thank you. And I think that we can put these questions on our on Facebook page. And I think they're very relevant. Debbie, yes? I, if I may, I believe the move to Eastwood is a temporary move. We have not been told that. Yeah. No. Because it's in writing. We have, not, we have not been told that, no. No. From the newspaper, it said in the evil that it was moving over there. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah. And it temporarily makes our... We have not been told. There has been nowhere it's been stated it's temporary. No. Mm -hmm. Next question. Mark, a couple of my friends are officers across the street. Sir? A couple of my friends are officers across the street. They've been told that is a permanent move over there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 